So this week I picked up a 2018 Honda Fit. And when I first picked up this car, I was sort of uninterested in it because it just seems like an inexpensive solution for people that are looking for a car that just needs to go from A to B. But after spending a week with this car, I have come to realize that there is so much more to this car than just that. And to find out what that is, it's coming up here on the Drive Guide. So I'm merging on the highway here and you can probably hear this engine makes a real racket as you try to pick up speed and you have to sustain that noise for a while because it's certainly not the fastest thing I've ever driven. Uh, the CVT in this car is definitely the biggest problem I have with it. But to be fair, I haven't really come across a CVT that I have actually liked. Um, the engine in this car is a one and a half litre four cylinder. It produces 128 horsepower and 113 pound feet of torque. As we just saw there, it's not the fastest thing in the world and it's not the best sounding engine ever put into a car. But here on the highway, rides very nicely. There's a little bit of wind noise, more than I was expecting from this small of a car, but the audio system is pretty good so you can drown out all of those noises. But the LX that we have here, we do have quite a lot of standard features. So you get the seven inch touchscreen, which is nicely responsive and it has some pretty good animations when you go from screen to screen. You also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with this system, so that's a great feature. It's not as snappy as the Honda Odyssey that I just reviewed. Be sure to click that I button up above if you wanna see that review. But it is definitely one of the better systems I've come across. You have quite a lot of safety equipment, so radar assisted cruise control, you have lane keep assist, uh, forward collision warning, you'll get a little light that flashes here on the digital display if it thinks you're gonna crash. And then when it comes to the design of the interior, I really like the way it's laid out. I love these buttons and knobs that you have here to control the temperature. They're just so chunky and you really have to put the effort in to make them work. I love that. You do have a little compartment up here which could be somewhere to store your sunglasses but when you pull it back it could be a cup holder. Overall it's nicely put together. Yeah you're gonna find some scratchier plastics but at the end of the day this is an economy car. You're not gonna be expecting the greatest of materials. You get a little button down here that says economy and when you hit it, you get a little green leaf that comes here in the instrument cluster. But beyond that, nothing happens. I have no idea what it does. After spending my time here on the highway and just the act of trying to merge onto the highway, it hasn't particularly inspired me to take this car into the twisties because <laughs> that engine made one hell of a racket and the CVT didn't really do anything to engage me in the driving experience. So we're gonna let the twisties go for this review, but let's go into town instead to see what this car is like when you use it every day. One thing that I failed to mention on the highway is the instrument cluster that you have in front of you here. The speedometer has this really interesting 3D effect. The numbers are deeper into the dial than what the little dashes are and it's really interesting to look at. I really like that touch. You then also have two digital displays on the left and the right. On the left hand side it's your tack, your time and the outside temperature and then on the right it's configurable to show a whole bunch of things that I am not particularly interested in. Driving in town you can definitely hear that engine working. It always provides enough power for you to get out of the way or to get off the line quickly if you need to. This car is just so effortless to drive in town because you only have probably another two feet or so from where the steering wheel is, so placing it is very easy. Parking in this car is no hassle whatsoever. And because this car has so much glass, 
the visibility is really good as well. So if you look behind you, yeah, there's a thick D pillar, but the rear windscreen glass is very wide. One thing to note on that though, because this glass is so large, putting the windows up and down takes roughly a lifetime. There's also some great practicality features in this car as well. So this second row of seats we have, they can fold relatively flat, so it's easier to load big things into the car. Another thing you can do is you can actually lift the seat bottoms up. So if you needed to carry something tall, that can go there too. Another neat feature is that, let's say your Rolls-Royce Phantom is in its service for the day, but you still need a car that packs a lot of rear seat legroom. What you can do is take the headrests of this passenger seat and then fold it all the way down. So then you almost have like a lounge chair in the back of this car. So Phantom owners, take note. Another thing I've just noticed in this car is that if you come to a stop, you can feel a little vibration from the engine or the powertrain, whatever it is, you can feel a little bit of vibration that comes through the bottom of the seat. It's not that it's harsh or unpleasant, but Let's say if I was a woman, I would intentionally get myself stuck in traffic jams. Overall, the interior of this car is just really well engineered. You've got a ton of space down here underneath all these temperature controls. The glove box is a good size, as well as the center console. You have some door pockets for your water bottles. And it's like a mini minivan in here. My favorite thing about this Honda Fit is really just how much you can do with the interior. It puts cars in the class above to shame when you're talking about interior space and usability and practicality. So if you're looking to buy a car that's small, but you haul around a fair few people and a lot of things, I highly recommend you check out this Honda Fit. So that's everything from me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watching this video. I hope you can like, share, and subscribe. And I hope to see you again on The Drive Guide.